So you've probably heard of an API before, but you might not know what it stands for or why it's important for a person working in data. As a data scientist, APIs are one of the most valuable tools that go underappreciated in the domain. In this video, I'll bring in a special guest to help you understand what APIs are, and I'll also go in-depth into how data scientists use APIs. Rather than me explaining what an API is, I thought I'd outsource this info to a software developer who could probably explain the concept far better than I could. Coincidentally, the process of outsourcing work is a little bit like what an API does in the first place. I'll let Tiff in Tech tell you about what an API stands for and a little bit about how they work. If you're even remotely interested in software development, I highly recommend checking out her awesome YouTube channel. Thanks, Ken. Okay, let's break down what exactly is an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. APIs allow for different programs to talk to each other. For example, every time you go on your phone and open up the weather app, you're using an API. In simplest terms, an API is a messenger system that is listening for requests. And once it receives that request, it will forward the message on to another system to run a process. For the person requesting the API, we don't need to know all this crazy stuff that goes on under the hood. Rather, when we send a request for an API, all we expect is to get back the response. This abstraction is key. Okay, back to you, Ken. Tiff, thank you so much for that incredible breakdown. I've linked Tiff's channel in the description below for you to check out after you finish this video. Okay, so why are APIs important for data scientists? The first reason is that APIs are one of the best ways to get access to data that you're interested in. Many websites give you access to their data via an API. A great example of this is my leaderboard project for my YouTube channel. I was able to get all of the comments on my channel from YouTube's API. I've also linked a few resources below with some public data APIs that might be of interest to you. Most of the data that you're working with in the field is either coming from a database or from an API. You may even be accessing your databases from an API as well. As we mentioned, APIs are meant to be reliable and consistent, and accessing or creating an API can be part of the data pipeline. Now, data scientists don't just use APIs, we also create them. In many companies, the main products that data scientists produce are in fact APIs. You're probably thinking, but I thought data scientists built models and made beautiful visuals. You're definitely right on that front. However, one of the best ways to make your model usable to other people is to turn it into an API endpoint. With that, software developers or even other data scientists can send data to your API and they'll in turn receive the results of your machine learning model. I'm sure that the models you're building are great, but they're completely useless unless they can be used by other people. The last big way that APIs are useful to data scientists is by leveraging other people's models or services. Often someone else might have a model that we want to use in the pipeline of our work. Instead of downloading their code and recreating it, I can just leverage the API that they've already created. As a data scientist, I can also use APIs to implement the work that I've already done. For example, through the Twitter API, I can post a tweet. If I built a sick machine learning model that collected all of the data on a specific topic, say the 66 days of data initiative, I could have my pipeline directly post that tweet to my account using the API. There are some other uses for APIs, but I think I hit the big ones for the data science perspective in this video so far. Your next question is likely, how do I use an API? All APIs follow a fairly similar structure, but they can have their own idiosyncrasies. I recommend finding the documentation for any API you're interested in using and follow the examples that are shown. Once you've used a few, you'll get the gist. In general, you need to send a request to the API. Most of the time, these requests are sent via a script in your programming language of choice. We can send a request to get something from the API, or we can send one to post to write something in the API, like the Twitter API example we used before. The API will always send you something back. That'll either be data, or it'll be a confirmation that what you sent is written somewhere. Now for a slightly more difficult question. How do you make an API? There are plenty of different options out there for this, but generally you do this by creating a basic web server that takes in requests and returns responses, just like Tiff and I described. In Python, you can do this with Flask, FastAPI, or quite a few other services, and you can host this on Roku, AWS, Google, or any of the main cloud platforms. Again, an example of me creating and using an API is located in my subscriber leaderboard video that I've linked above and below. 
I really hope that this video helps you to better understand APIs and how they can be useful to you as an aspiring data scientist. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.